Hello, my name is Insomniac, and I had no clue whatsoever about what to do when I started playing this game. To make the first steps easier for players who are just beginning to play group content, I decided to make some very basic guides to help get you started. That being said, this guide will keep it to a very basic level to teach the foundations of healing and won't go into very specific setups, classes or anything more advanced. With that in mind, let's get started. First off, what actually is your purpose as a healer? As a healer, your job is to keep the group alive, help the group sustain, buff the group, and debuff the enemy. To achieve this goal, you utilize a combination of your skills and your gear setup. So let's get into these sections one by one. First of all, keeping your group alive. This of course also includes yourself. If you are that, you cannot help the group. But how do you stay alive yourself? Here are some very basic tips to make survival easier for yourself in all kinds of content. First off, never stand behind the tank or next to the tank. The tank will usually turn the bosses back to the group. Behind it you are safe and you are out of reach of cleave attacks. However, if you stand next to the tank, those cleave attacks will also hit you and a lot of times can even one-shot you. Secondly, block cast. There's heavy damage coming in, you can block cast. Any non-channeled skill can be cast while holding block without dropping block, which means you can keep healing yourself while protecting yourself. The next point would be to guide adds to the tank. Sometimes one of the adds or maybe even the boss might get angry at you. In this case, do not run away in panic, but instead run towards the tank so he can take them off you. Heavy attacks targeting you. Heavy attacks in this game are displayed with yellow lines coming off the enemy. This is an option that is on by default. If it is not turned on for you, you can turn it on in the combat cues option in the gameplay menu of your settings. You will only see yellow lines coming off the enemy if the heavy attack is actually targeting you or if the heavy attack is targeting someone else but can still hit you due to an AoE component attached to the attack. If this happens, make sure you block or dodge. Dodging is always the safer method because some heavy attacks will kill you even through block. Interrupt. Usually interrupt mechanics are bad for everyone, so everyone should interrupt when noticing a channel. This also includes you as the healer. Interrupts are displayed by the game, with red lines coming off the enemy. Simply bash the enemy to stop the channel. Don't stand in displayed AoE. This is pretty self-explanatory, since any AoE will damage you. Some more and some less. As a rule of thumb, just stay out of them or block if you can't get away from them anymore. You can also always try to dodge. With the base game settings, AoE and especially where they end can be very hard to see. Turning up the brightness or changing the AoE color can be a lifesaver and I highly recommend doing so. You can do this in the gameplay section of your settings. Now that you are alive and kicking, let's get to keeping your team alive. You will keep your team alive with a combination of HOTS, which stands for healing over time, burst heals, which are strong heals with an immediate effect, and ground-based HOTS which are also healing over time effects, but they are placed on the ground as an AoE. A lot of those skills are from your restoration stuff skill line, but some can also come from your class abilities. Healing over time skills are any heals you apply that will keep on ticking heals on the target for a while after. An example for this from the restoration stuff skill line is radiating regeneration. Ground based HOTs are the same, but they work for people standing in the AoE you place on the floor. An example for this, from the Restoration Staff skill line, is Illustrious Healing. Burst heals do not always add a hot. You just use them and they immediately heal your hit group members up by a good chunk. An example for a burst heal is Combat Prayer from the Restoration Staff skill line. Of course there are examples for all of these in class skill lines as well, but to keep it basic and since it applies to all kinds of healers, all of the examples called are from the Restoration Staff skill line. Now, how do you apply and use those skills? This has a lot to do with your positioning. As mentioned before, you want to be at the boss's back, and so do your DDs. To be able to buff them and hit everyone properly, you should stand a little bit behind your DD. This way you can hit yourself, the tank and the DDs with any used healing abilities. Simply place ground hearts on the group so everyone gets hit. Use your burst heals if they are needed. Not every fight needs a lot of healing, and a lot of time your HOTS will already take care of any damage your group takes. 
which gives you more time to focus on buffs and debuffs. And this already leads us to the next point. As a healer, you should try to help your group do more damage. You do this by buffing the DDs so they hit harder, by debuffing the enemy so it takes more damage, and also by helping your group with sustain, so they don't need to heavy attack and can keep on fighting. Leaving use gear aside for now, there are many skills in the game that will help you achieve those goals. The biggest example for buffing ability is Combat Prayer. Combat Prayer will always be one of your most essential, if not the most essential skill as a healer. It serves as a burst heal for your group, and you can spam it if needed. And on top of all of this, it adds a very essential buff to your group called Minor Berserk. Any ally hit with Combat Prayer will gain Minor Berserk. Anyone affected with Minor Berserk will do 5% more damage. Additionally, any ally hit with Combat Prayer will also gain extra resistances and take less damage. Look at the skill as your main tool. Try to keep it on your DDs 100% of the time if possible, and use it as your main source of burst heal. A lot of new healers resort to class-based burst heals, like for example the Templar's Breath of Life, because they are very bursty and strong. In reality, you simply do not need those abilities to keep your group alive and they will end up holding you back. Keep up your ground-based hots and use Combat Prayer whenever it is about to run out, or if you need a burst heal. Your group will stay alive without ever needing skills like Breath of Life, which is expensive and only targets two people besides you, which essentially renders it useless in situations like trials where you need to heal bigger groups. As for abilities that increase damage taken by the enemy, I will pick the Warden class to serve as an example. Fetcher Infection will make any affected enemy take 5% more damage from anything hitting them. Simply using them on a target will make your entire group hit harder. The skill is of course only one possible example, but in combination with the 5% increased damage done from Combat Prayer, you have at this point already increased the overall damage of your group by a lot. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, to add damage, you should use the correct ultimates. The most important ultimate for you on a healer will be Aggressive Horn. After using it, your group will get 20% increased critical damage for 10 seconds and a 10% resource increase for 30 seconds. This is a massive damage boost for your entire group. Since the tank will usually use the same ultimate and the effects do not stack, make sure you coordinate their usage so you don't waste them by using them at the same time. You can unlock Warhorn by increasing your Alliance War Assault skill line by doing Battlegrounds or any other type of PvP. Another option would be Light's Champion, one of the morphs of the Restoration Staff ultimate ability. This one beats out Warhorn for a healer in dungeons because it has a lower cooldown, but it will not be useful in trials because it won't hit everyone in the group. Your group members will get the same crit buff as Warhorn gives while active, but they will not receive the resource increase. Instead, they will get hit by very strong heals while the ultimate is up. Now to group sustain. Your DDs and also your tank will need your help to sustain staying alive and doing damage. Besides gear, which I will get into later, there are also skills that help with this. Elemental Drain from your Destruction Staff skill line is one of them. It applies minor Magicka seal to the enemy, which gives your group Magicka back every second as long as they damage it. You only need to apply it to one target for it to work. There's no need to put it on everything. The next essential skill is Energy Orb. Energy Orb is a slow floating orb that heals any ally touched in its way. Anyone in your team can activate its synergy to instantly restore their primary resource. One orb can be used by the entire group and they can use the synergy once every 20 seconds. So additionally to the orb being a really strong heal, it also keeps your group's resources up. The Templar's spear ability Luminous Shards also gives resources back in a similar manner. But only one of your group members will be able to activate it, which means you would have to send one for each of them. Orb and shard cooldowns are the same which means using both won't help your group. But how do you unlock Orb? Orb is from the Undaunted skill line. You can pick it up in the tavern with the Undaunted NPCs of the starting city of your alliance. For example in the Fish Stink in Devon's Watch if you are a member of the Ebonheart Pact. Simply talk to the NPC to gain the skill line. You can level it up by doing dungeon achievements and pledges. Now that we have talked about the kinds of skills to use, we should get into how to actually use them. As mentioned before, stay behind your DDs and try to get ground-based hots on all of your group members when using them. Your goal will be to keep up buffs and debuffs 100% of the time, or as close to 100% as possible. This means use all of your skills. As soon as one of them runs out, use it again. This will feel like a lot at the start and keep you busy, but it gets easier the more you do it and you will gain a lot from it in the end. 
Your priority should of course always be to keep your team alive, so neglect buffs and debuffs for heals if they are needed and then get back to it once everyone is safe. Just because you are a healer doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to hit the enemy and add some damage. Lots of healers have very low CPM, very low casts per minute, because they don't use abilities when there is nothing to refresh, and also because they do not utilize light attacks. Even though your damage will not be the same as a damage dealer's, you can still contribute to the group's damage by simply using light attacks in between every skill you use. This is called light attack weaving and will not slow down your skill usage. In the end, the light attacks will add up to a good chunk of damage. And if there's nothing at all to cast at the moment, you can just use combat prayer again or heavy attack to regain resources. But with all of this in mind, how do you actually know when to refresh an ability? This leads us straight to add-ons. There are many useful add-ons in this game and I could give a long list to make gameplay easier, but to keep it simple I will keep it to the essentials. Action Duration Reminder, or short ADR, will give you a timer on your abilities so you know exactly how long they will be active still. With the Blackwood patch the game has added a base game version of this, but I still recommend using ADR instead. The next one would be Code's Combat Alerts. This one goes straight back to staying alive so you can keep your group alive. It will display heavy attacks to you and give you a bar that shows when to roll dodge them to not take any damage. Additionally, it will call out mechanics for you, which makes staying alive in overall gameplay much, much easier. To get more into the correlation of DPS and healing, you should know how heals in the Elder Scrolls Online actually work. The strength of your healing abilities and also your healing critical are directly correlated to your spell damage and your spell critical. The more spell damage you have, the stronger your heals will be. The more spell critical you have, the more your heals will crit. This is why damage dealers' burst heals are usually insanely strong. Keeping this in mind, consider using a Manda Stone that buffs your crit chance, for example the Thief. And also consider using enchantments that increase your spell damage. Another important point of this is using the so-called good potions. This usually refers to essence of spell power. They are expensive, but they give you a massive boost in damage and crit, and also sustain. Of course you don't need to use them for, for example, normal dungeons, but you should use them for, for example, veteran trials, or if you are struggling to heal something, because they will instantly give you a massive increase in healing output and at the same time also boost any damage that you add to the group. Keep in mind that you can only keep up your potion buffs 100% of the time if you do have the medicinal use passive from the alchemy skill line, so make sure that you level it up and get the max amount of skill points possible in this particular passive. Lastly, let's get into healer gear. I will keep this very basic to not cause any confusion. When picking healer gear, you should consider what is actually needed. A lot of healing sets only add healing. Examples for this are sets like Winter's Respite or Sanctuary. They are very popular healer sets, but in reality they do not do much for your group since the demand of healing is simply not high enough to call for a gear set on top of your skills. Your healing skills with buffed spell damage will be more than enough to keep the group alive. So instead of using sets that just add flat healing, try to pick sets that increase your group's sustain and your group's damage output instead. An example for a set that increases your group's damage by a lot is Spell Power Cure from White Gold Tower. An example for a set that adds a lot of sustain for your group is Worm's Raymond from Vaults of Madness Dungeon, but this set only helps with Magicka sustain. Keep in mind that those set buffs usually do not stack, so having more than one of them in the group is a waste. This means that in trial situations where you have two healers instead of one, you will have to coordinate gear setups with the other healer and also with the tank, since for example Worm is also used by tanks quite frequently. Of course there are exceptions for this as well, but the most commonly used armor for healers is full light armor on the body, with a monster helmet and monster shoulders as I said, a destruction staff on the back bar, for example an inferno staff and a restoration staff on the front bar. In most types of contents, healer put all of their attribute points into Magicka. This concludes my guide to the basics of healing in the Elder Scrolls Online. If there are any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I will also make another one of these videos for each damage dealer and tank. Once they are uploaded, you can find a link to them in the video description. I really hope this helped.